The first unit word here is the natural word, and you need to get all kinds of vocabularies related to the natural word. So let's let's start. This the uh, this is this is the list uh, of vocabularies. It's uh, essential vocabularies for environmental impacts of lodging, and this first page is going to be uh, the the assignment at home because at the back of the book. We have uh, the keys, okay, the keys that are going to help you know okay, the answers for the right uh, for the right choice. And we are going to we are going to study based on the paragraphs of uh, Lokjing. We have like uh, six or seven paragraphs from A to F. And this is the first paragraph that we need to start with. Environmental impacts. So let's start from the very first one. We get from basic vocabularies to advanced vocabularies. So right here, this is unit one, and this is the, this is the first part. Environmental impacts of lodging. Uh, you know that environmental, environmental, this is ADJ, that is an adjective in English. And we have the word like envi environment. The first noun in English, the second noun that is environmentalist. So here, environmentalist, whenever you see, okay, the end of the word, which is list, L-I-S-T, this, uh, this is the title, uh, this is the title of jobs. This is the title of jobs for people. People working in the environment field uh, is ca are called environmentalist. Environment, you can say, Third, or you can use the word like scope, or the last word is the word like aspect. Aspect environment, aspect natural environment, aspects, third, for example, these are the words that we are going to use once we introduce our jobs. Environmental, can you can you give me like uh, a combinations, some kinds of combina uh, some kinds of combinations for the word environmental? environmental. We have so many ways to combine the word environmental in our life. Can you suggest me some combina uh, combinations for the, hello, can, can you suggest me some combinations for the word uh, environmental? Environmental what, for example? Oh, the camera is on. Very uh, oh, surprising. So right here, what, what is the combination for the word environmental? It's like uh, whenever we use the word like environmental, you know that ADJ cannot stand alone. You cannot say that, oh, I'm talking about environmental. No, whenever it comes to ADJ, if it means okay, you need to make a sentence and your sentence must be to be of your ADJ. So whenever you see ADJ, you will see some combinations. First ADJ, with noun in English, or noun with noun, okay, or verb in with noun, or verb ed, okay, verb ed, or verb three, verb three with noun in English. For example, ADJ with noun, uh, uh, we will have uh, a very familiar phrase in our lives, for us, such as a lovely family. You can see that lovely is ADJ. Family is a noun in English. That is how we combine two words together. So whenever you see ADJ, just remind yourself of one rule. An ADJ never stands alone. If you want to use ADJ, you need to find a noun in English. And this is the first case of uh, the grammar that we study today. Environmental, we don't say something environmental. We say that uh, environmental problems environmental matters and environmental issues. So problems and matters are for daily life English. Issues are for, are for organization or something that is very huge, very, very influential uh, to the world, to the city or to the country in particular. Environmental problems. So if you want to use the word environmental, you need to have a noun after it. This is a reason why you can see that in this paragraph, the title 
of this paragraph is the environmental impacts. So environmental, ADJ right here, and impacts the noun at this point. And then in IELTS or in Cambridge, impact, we have like many kinds of work forms for impact. The very first one, that is a noun. In, in Vietnamese, yeah, we have the meaning like this. The second one, that is, okay, that is a verb. In Vietnamese, we have something like this. So, so the impact is an action verb. Please remember it influence. An impact is a noun in English. Please remember influence. That is also a noun in English. And one more thing, one more thing. We have the word like influential. Influential is an adjective. It means something extremely or tremendously, tremendously important. And if you want to say that something tremendously important, you can say something is very influential or something is very like vital, okay? vital, crucial, essential. These are the words that, uh, that are very old to you, but we need to remind you of all kinds of words for in English. So let's, let's start. Uh, Yes, I'm listening. Can, can can you can you raise your voice because it sounds very soft from your side? Uh, I have the question that uh, the impact they can you for the positive and negative are impact or oh. like. Uh, oh, I understand. You want to say that? Uh, uh, you want to ask me to show you the positive and the negative sides or the positive and the negative ways of uh, the word impact, right? The ways to use no. impact in positive and I, negative, right? I mean, uh, in part, can you to describe both positive and negative issue or just for positive? Oh, very good, very good question. Uh, the word impact, just like the word in influence, uh, right here, you are talking about uh, an action verb. So the word impact, just like the word influence, it can be used for both positive and negative. It just depends on the word choice. If you want to talk about the positive side, just add positively in an action verb after it. If you want to talk about the negative side, just add, just add negatively in an action verb after it. So for the word impact and influence or any kinds of word forms, we just want to say that, okay, all kinds of action verbs are neutral. We have the word like neutral. It means that it's, it is both positive and negative. It depends on the word, okay, before an action verb. This is, this is called adverb, ADJ with lead. We use ADJ with lead, that is an adverb before an action verb to say something to the side that we pick for the for the action verb. So uh, uh, do you get uh, what I just say? And uh, do you wanna ask any questions? Yes, uh, I got it. And uh, for environmental, I have a special combination is friendly environmental. It is it, 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 like a frame to okay. you for um, like uh, something is uh, good for environment. Okay, friendly environmental uh, is, uh, is, is almost correct. Friendly, you know that the word uh, friendly. Friendly, this is ADJ. From the beginning, we know that it is an ADJ. And uh, this is also an ADJ. So if you say that friendly, 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 environmental, friendly, environmental, we have to use one more noun after it. Like friendly, environmental factors, friendly, environmental elements, or friendly, environmental areas, okay? Because these are two adjectives. So we need to have one more noun to form the combination. I understand you want to say that friendly, environment, but you forget that, uh, you, you forget the not environment. People say that I want to work in a friendly environment. I want to study in a friendly environment, okay? Not, not too competitive, for example. 
So this is this is the noun that you are looking looking for, but you forget the the, the, the word form environment as a noun in English. So anything else come come up? Um, no, no more. Then. Okay. So right here, let's start from this sentence: From shipping crates to paper bags, the luxury industry supplies the raw materials for an array of products. Very good, uh, very good word uh, choice right here. An area, an array, an area, sorry, an area. After an area, we need to use uh, plural nouns. You can say that you have, okay, you have lots of choices, but that is basic English. Basic English, lots of and nouns at the end. For advanced English, we can say that we have a variety of choices. Yeah, this is going to this is going to help you increase your IELTS or Cambridge points if you choose to use advanced vocabularies. A variety of choices, or okay, you can say that a diversity of choices, a, a diversity of choices, or an array, an array of choices. This is this is how we form, okay, advanced vocabularies. A variety, you know, variety, a noun in English. Instead of using the noun, you can choose to use an, ad, an adjective, ADJ, various, various what? Various choices. A diversity, diversity is a noun in English, and we can say diverse, a diverse, okay, diverse choices. So after various and diverse, please try to use plural nouns. Right here, they are talking about products. They are talking about raw materials. Raw materials, raw materials, materials and products are the key, the key words in this paragraph. Let's, let's start uh, right here, the lodging industry. Lodging industry, lodging industry. Lodging industry is divided into two fields. The first one that is the legal, okay? The legal business. The second one, we have the word like illegal business. Illegal business. If illegal, if it comes to illegal business, people they try to go, okay, they try to invade, they try to invade, invade, okay, the forest. They try to explore, okay, something in the forest, and they are going to the forest, the forest. Okay, they, they, they just get, they, they just try to cut down on the trees in order to get the wolves illegally. So when it comes to illegal business, those kinds of business is performed without business license. So right here, people are talking about both legal business and illegal business and what and what is going to happen to the land and what is going to happen to the soil after we cut down so many trees in the forest. The luxury industry supplies the raw materials for an area of products. So right here, they are talking about paper bags, shipping crates. We don't need to search for the definition of the word crates. Right here, you can guess. You can guess the meaning of the word crates. Something okay, is used for shipping, for shipping or for shipment. And right here, this is a fa uh, family, okay, family word, three for the word ship, shipping. Ship, this is, uh, this is a transportation, transportation and shipment. This is the business when it comes to ship. And ship, this is, an, this, this is also used uh, as an action verb. If you want to say that I want to ship this to your house, it means I want to transfer this to your house. I want to deliver, I want to deliver this to your house. If you try to ship something, you are going to have, okay, crate. Crate is something that is going to protect, okay, your products when you ship it to, okay, foreign countries or to different parts in your, okay, in your city. So right here, we have uh, the, 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 all fields, okay, all fields of the word ship. In this case, next right here. However, this is not without untold harm to the environment, untold harm. 
untold rules or spoken rules. When it comes to the wooden told harm, we can think of the, uh, a kind of a very old vocabulary that we used to that we used to study before. That is uh, unspoken rules. So right here, they say they are going to use the word unspoken rules a lot in the society. So it's like if you want to work, you need to have a lot of a lot of money. If you don't have a lot of money. You need to you need to get the best out of you, or you need to get uh, or you need to have talent. That is unspoken rules for business in the society. And right here, they use the word like untold, untold, or okay, untold. It is for like untold harm or untold. Or okay, something is untold. And untold is used for everything in this okay in this world. But if you use the word unspoken. The word unspoken only goes with the word rules, unspoken rules, untold harm. So right here, untold harm, uh, can, you, can you describe the meaning of the word untold harm in, in English? In this class, we need to use everything in English in order to upgrade your listening skill and your English comprehension. So what does it mean when it comes to the word untold harm? Um. In my opinion, I think in untold harm, it means that uh, like the action this can can cannot spread by the word, but uh, it can be performed by by the action, like uh, the result of uh, the result of the action of the firm, yes, like the company. Yeah, very very good in this in this case. I like the I like the way that you say that uh is it's, uh, it is something that we cannot express by words, but it is only performed by actions, and the result of an action. You know that after we do something, we have two words to describe our action. The first one that is the word result. If you use the word result, it is positive. But if you do something wrong, uh, we don't use the word, we don't use the word result to describe the outcome of our actions. We use the word consequence to describe or okay, get the negative outcome of an action. Consequence. Consequence. Something like this. Very negative. So if I do something wrong, that is the consequence of my of my choice. That is a consequence of my actions for myself. And uh, if you don't want if you don't want to sound positive, you don't want to sound negative. You can do something very neutral. That is outcome. Outcome. It stands very neutral right here. An outcome of an action. It means that what is going to happen after I do this. What is going to happen? after I perform this act. And please remember the passive voice in English, the passive voice. If you say, if you talk about people, people, people perform actions, but things are performed, for example. So we use the word perform, just like the word carry out. If this is the same as the word carry out. Perform first, it, it is used for artists. Perform secondly, it is used for okay, people in daily life. So I perform my act. Act is it's, it's different from okay, action. If you say action, it means uh, it only means that, oh, this is the way, this is the way that I react. This is the way that I respond to the situation. So if you use the word action, um, it means that uh, this is how you respond to, this is how you react, okay, two words towards the situation or towards okay, the circumstance, circumstance. But if you use the word act, it means, it means, it means, it, uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it means uh, something like you choose, that is your choice. That is your choice of act, okay? That is your choice. And uh, you, okay, you are conscious, conscious of your choice, of your choice. So if you use the word act, it means you understand why you act like this. You understand what reasons and what, okay, and what causes for your act. 
the word act can be used as an action verb in English. That is the reason why people in advanced English, they are going to say something like, I'm going to act wisely, act wisely in a situation. If you choose to act wisely, it means that you control your emotions. You don't reveal your emotions, okay? Don't reveal the emotions. You just, okay, follow. You just follow your instincts. Instincts, it means that you follow the, the voice inside you and you just get everything done as you plan. That is act wisely. We try to control. We don't, uh, we, we don't reveal the emotions because People don't want to see your emotions. They just want to see the result or the consequence of your, of your act. That is, the, that is why uh, people choose to act wisely in business or in situations in which they have to get something done. So from now on, please remember the difference between the, the, the word act, noun in English, and action as a noun in English. Action means you don't want to say, you don't want to describe any kinds of okay, smart choices or considerate thoughts about your actions before you perform the action. You just want to say, oh, this is, this, this is the way that I deal with the problem and that is it. People don't think much and you don't think much about your action. But if you use the word act as an action verb, I act, it means that is your choice. And we know that you are conscious of your choice. Conscious of your choice, it means you are aware of your choice. You are not something like sleeping, okay? Sleepy, sleepy head. Not, okay, it's not sleepy head. Don't choose, okay, to, to do something based on feelings or emotions. So that is act, the difference between the word act and action, something like this. And once you speak, I find the word consequence. So please try to remember consequence and result and outcome once you speak. So right now, uh, with the, uh, go, please, please look at the brand map right now. And I want you to, to uh, express the situation again for me. We need to express. Uh, yes. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For the the difference between art and action, I want to ask for the, how about activities? Oh, activity, right? Activity. Uh, yeah. So what does it mean when it comes to the activity? What, what do you think about the meaning of uh, it? I think it has the same meaning as action. Anything else? Like, um, um, when when we will use the word activity when um, i think we use the word activity when we describe about doing exercise right uh, something like this okay so activity and action okay are completely different when it comes to Vietnamese meaning, you can see that actions meaning, yeah, an activity, when it comes to Vietnamese meaning, it means something like this. So if you use the word activity, it is much more about the program. It is much more about, it is much more about event or it is much more about the service. But when it comes to action, it is only about the individual, just like, why do you why do you act like this? Okay, why do you perform this action? Why do you say no? Why do you say yes? That is an action. But activity, they don't say that this is my activity. If you say this is my activity, it means you organize, okay, you organize the activity, the activity, so okay, for the group. It's like uh, after we study very hard, we can organize okay, the activities for the group, like uh, let's hang out, okay? Go to watch a favorite movie, okay? Eat together, drink together, hang out and have fun. That is activity. Activity is much more about program. It, it is, okay, it is very systematic. It is very systematic. People say that I have lots of activities when I work in okay, a company, activities number one, we can go traveling on that holiday. 
activity number two, we can receive the 13th month salary after we work one year in the company. So that is called activity, action for individual, activity for groups in English. So Rajna, do, do, do you understand? Yes, I got it. Yeah, okay. And Rajna, please, please look at the word untold for and try to use, please try to use all kinds of these words into your expressions. I need to hear you make use of these words into your English expressions for the word untold harm. One minute for you to, to get it. Is me that I have to have a sentence or oh. as to describe the, the word like no, following if, the way I understand. Oh, you need to you need to think of like five sentences or ten sentences. On um, uh, please only only depend on the branch of the idea. For example, okay, let let me be an example for you first. Untold harm. Uh, first, when it comes to untold harm, we can understand that something which is very harmful cannot be cannot be expressed by words cannot be told within a community. People know the people know the harm, but they don't speak of the harm because of some personal reasons. People know exactly okay the the tremendous harm, the tremendous uh, tremendously negative influence in business, but they don't speak of, they don't choose to to raise their voice. To, towards the community because some somehow they want they they they, they want to try to hide the, the harms to the community. So if you know the harm and you choose not to speak of the harm, that is untold harm. So the the, the first okay first meaning of the untold harm it means you intentionally hide you intentionally hide the harms of something and you would say that oh this is an untold harm. But, and the second meaning of the word in total means that people don't know the harm okay, of this act in the business yet. People don't know anything about the harms. People can only see the positive side of the business. So once we don't know anything related to harms, related to the negative impacts, we can use the word in told. So the word in told can be expressed in two ways, a negative way and a positive way. Negative ways we know, but we try not to reveal. We try to hide the fact of the harm. The second okay, way, which is okay, which is a positive way, we don't know anything, and it just happens. That is the two of okay, the fact untold positive. The two facts of us not knowing anything, and it just and it just occurs. It just comes to us as harms in the business. And the second that is the negative. We know, but we hide. That is untold harm. And if we hide the two facts, uh, yeah, somehow we will face both. That is okay. Both factors. That is uh, results and the consequences of our actions. The results of our actions. If we are lucky enough, we will receive good results of okay the business. If we are not lucky enough, the more we we try to hide okay the two facts the more, okay, the more consequences we are going to deal with. Uh, right here, okay, people choose to perform laws of acts because they know that one day somebody, okay, somebody is going to find out. So that is the reason why they try to perform so many kinds of acts to hide the truth and to show people what they need to see, not to show people what they need to know about the truth. So that, okay, that, so how? How do we choose to perform the acts? We need to conscious of our of our choice. How to become conscious? You need to know what you know, what you want to do, and you need to under, understand your true needs. The more you understand yourself, the more okay, the more conscious you become. And if you are conscious, you will make the right decision. You will perform your act, you your act wisely. So, so that is that is how you make the presentation or the situation live or lovely in the class. And this is how we train 
students to get the highest score uh, in IELTS or Cambridge, you need to like uh, the, uh, or you need to look at the brand map of ideas and you need to come up. Okay, for example, first you look at unspoken rules and you see that oh my gosh, lots of words. Don't be, don't be distracted by lots of words. Just pay attention to the keywords first. So the keywords right here, unspoken rules. The second key keyword that is untold harm. So pay attention to, to, to these two keys. And once you speak of unspoken rules, you speak of untold harm. And after you speak of untold harm, you need to come up with imagine the okay, ideas. So you can use okay, these three words. After you imagine the ideas, please try to please try to create the connection between okay, the result, uh, the result consequences and the performing carry out. You need to create a connection so you can jump from, you can jump from the presentation okay, of this branch to okay, the presentation of the second branch. And once you come to the second branch, you just need to follow, okay, follow your follow your feelings, follow the instincts, follow the voice inside you, the format, the format how, okay? And uh, yeah, just follow the emotions. Once you come to the second branch, just follow the emotions to finish the second branch. So the difficulties, once it comes to presentation based on the brand map is try to create the connection, the connection between okay, the two branches together. If you have only one branch, for example, something like this, very easy. But if you have like two branches, you need to create a small connection. Don't, don't be scared of small connection. The more you, the more you speak, the, the easier it's going to get because things are pretty easy for lies, L-I-E, things are pretty easy for imaginations. If it comes to the truth, it is very hard, but if, if it comes to lies and imaginations, and speaking is going to be very easy. So you need to practice speaking a lot. Speaking is going to get you IS writing and IS reading and listening. So right here, uh, go please look at the brand map of ideas again. Try to come up with the presentations. Yeah, uh, uh, first look at this one. This is your brand map. And we just, we just developed this brand map based on first word, environmental impacts, second, area products, okay, third, untold harm. So only like uh, three, three uh, two sentences, we can develop okay, lots of vocabularies and structures. So this is how we study. Careful and diverse in knowledge. So right now, try to push for products. Look at uh, this word. I'm going to mute the mic and I'm going to turn off my camera. In order to, in, in order not to distract you, I want you to focus. Once you are ready with your ideas, just say that uh, I am ready, and I'm going to turn on my camera and my mic because I need to listen to you at that at that time. So right now, muting the mic and turning off the camera. You have like two or three minutes for thinking of ideas. Right here, off the camera, off the mic too.
well. It could help you a lot of harm. Can, can, can you think of anything? Yes, teacher. Yeah, so is it okay for you to, to uh, give me your presentations right now? Okay, teacher. Yes, I'm listening. Um, let me try. Uh, I think my, uh, I talk about the food delivery. This food delivery now they is a common service. Uh, it's how people can easily order and having food when they stay at home. But uh, there, there are some untold aspects of um, this service. For example, uh, like there are some customer they bump they bump their products. This um this way you to is describe an act that customer order product but they don't receive it and are, as a consequence the deliver deliverer have to pay for on this bill by their own money and occasionally the amount of money is large and is the same as the salary of one day of the deliverer and um as we can see that an array of activity and now about this action and raise and raise awareness of people, especially is young generation and teenagers. I hope this can be improved in the future. Is that's that's all my idea? Understand? Yeah, yeah this is quite good for you. It's quite good. Yeah, I understand. I understand everything. But the problem here is your pronunciation, worthy. Your pronunciation. Because once you say that, once you say the phrase untold aspects, your pronunciation is very soft. The way that you the way that you move your lips to produce the sound of aspect P sound, the P sound is, is very soft. So uh, please pay more attention to the pronunciation part. And the second word that uh, that makes me that, that makes me notice that is about that uh, that is the sound of the two words for example instead of saying for example you just say that for example and uh, the pronunciation of the p again the p pronunciation sounds very weak in this uh, in this uh, presentation so everything here is is very good from the ideas to the way that you form or get the words into speaking. Everything sounds very good, but the pronunciation, we need to pay attention to the pronunciation from now on. And this is the way that I'm going to use to, to teach you from listening skill, speak skin skill, and reading to, to reading skills. So okay, we, we, we should we should communicate, we should exchange information, we should do everything in English in order to boost and upgrade your listening skills. The more that you listen, the more that you advance your English. Because once you listen to the CDs or to the radios or to the files in English, they speak English very fast and they try to raise their voice and they try to lower their voice all of a sudden in order to distract your, your, okay, your comprehension. So from now on, everything is done in English. And the reading skill, how do we study the reading skill? For me, I'm going to teach very, very, uh, very carefully and very details because everything should be, okay, should be exploited, should be exploited, okay, to the best extent. For other people, they just, they just translate from English to Vietnamese meanings for you. And they just get the new words from okay the sentence. But if I only teach you the new words, if I only teach you the meanings, okay, the Vietnamese meanings of the sentence, the thing that you get is the new words. But the worst thing that you that you get for yourself is is that you are unable to use the new words. So that is that is how the the English market these days. People know the new words, but they don't know how to use the new words. 
and the pronunciation is very worse because they don't practice English a lot. The only way for us to practice and the only way for us to study, okay, in advanced and differently, that is, that is, we need to practice all kinds of new words along with advanced grammars, advanced structures. We don't use simple English anymore. So once you study reading skills from now on, it is very hard because you need to think of ideas all of a sudden, and you need to make use of the new vocabularies right in, in the class. And that is what happens in the class and what is going to happen at home. At home, you need to find the definitions of all these words. And you need first, just complete the exercise. Second, try to complete your exercise in an advanced way. What is the advanced way to use these words? Presentation. Presentation, you need to make small presentation by yourself in front of the mirror every day. Aquatic, how can I make the presentation? You need to think of the ideas for yourself. So don't just try to complete the exercise in the book. If you want to get the last degree of Cambridge and the IELTS above 7.0, Try to complete the exercise and try to advance your exercise by presentations at home by using each of these words. Don't try to combine the words together. Just use okay one word for one presentation. And next, what are you going to do with the paragraph at home? Please read the paragraph first and please try to okay, please try to find the answers for the paragraph. You will easily find the answers once you understand the paragraph. And here, people say that they are going to have the tips, the hints for you to find the answers. The fact is, the truth is, we don't have the hints. There are no hints in English, just synonyms and antonyms. Synonym means that what are okay, the words with the same meaning, okay? With the same meaning as the word impact. So if you know lots of synonyms, if you know lots of antonyms, that is, if you know lots of words with the same meaning and lots of words with the opposite meanings, you are easily, you are going, you are easily going to understand the meaning of the paragraph and you can find the details which have the same meanings okay, as the questions. And it's, it's, and it's, it's going to help you get the right answers. So do you understand what I just say, Goy? Yes, teacher, I got it. Yeah. And and I have something to say that I know that my pronunciation is quite bad because like when I present, I try to speak quickly to bro go through this word. And I, I don't know how to improve this. Um, oh, you don't know how to, you don't know how to practice and improve, you know, your pronunciation, right? I mean, uh, when I research for new words, I try to listen pronunciation and practice, uh, and practice. But uh, when I say a sentence or I present something, I, I forget that and like, I try to speak quickly to pass to pass uh, this. Oh, I understand right now. It means first you 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 uh you you also you also research you also re, uh, you also re, uh, research research for the pronunciation of the words and you also listen to the pronunciation online. Yeah. Yeah, right. And yeah. secondly, once you speak, once you present, you okay, you you pay you pay too much attention to the content of the presentation. So that is the reason why you follow, you follow the ideas and you try to present as many as the ideas. And that is how okay, it gets in the pronunciation part. So I understand right now and uh, the way for us to balance the pronunciation and the co English communication or the English presentation is we need 
to practice the pronunciation based on your own writing piece. Your own writing piece, that is your essay, your essay or your paragraph. So after you write, after I fix your grammar, we need to have a, a, um, another class to, to read, to read along with each other or get the whole paragraph. So I have to, I have to help you pronounce your own, your, your own vocabularies from your own essays. And I also need to help you to read out loud everything that we study. So what is it that everything that we study? Look at this one, this is the paragraph. So I read first and you need to read after me. We need to practice this for one year. That is the maximum time, time for you to practice. And uh, before the IELTS, uh, the, before the IELTS exam in February, you need to practice okay, every day. So I'm going to divide the class. I'm going to, to divide the classes into the pronunciation class and uh, the studying section. So right now, the ways for you to practice pronunciation. First, read along with me everything that you study in, in the class. After you study, you need to practice pronunciation. That is the first way. And the second way to practice your pronunciation is based on your own writings. The way you write, the, the, the way you write is going to tell that the way you know how to combine the words grammatically. And we need to practice pronunciation based on your writing too. So two, two things for us to base on for pronunciation, things that we study, every, every studying materials, every book, every page, every paragraph, every word force, every brand map, you need to practice pronunciation right after the class. And the second one, that is your writing. So only two things for you to practice pronunciation. It's, it's not hard. It just takes a lot of time and it, it requires your patience. So the more you practice, the more it's going to be flexible and uh, the natural, the, the natural, okay, the, the more natural you are going to get once it comes to speaking skill. So from now on, after we develop the brand map, we need to practice pronunciation. So let's apply this way from tomorrow. So please remember, 8 a.m. You need to practice listening and reading skills based on my collection of uh, assignments online. I'm going to upload on the website and you need to practice only, okay, within one hour. Don't try to, okay, prolong the time because once you prolong the time, the effectiveness, the effectiveness of the assignment and the link or of the link is going to be it's going to be sabotaged. It means it's going to be damaged. Okay, the effective is going to be okay. It's going to be gone. So right now, from from now on, eight a.m. to nine a.m. practice done before nine a.m. And I think I'm going to 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 get the one p.m. class to okay nine nine a.m. class. So you are going to practice okay based on the link from eight to nine, and you are going to study with me from nine to ten. Uh, yeah, is, is it okay for you, T? What? Meaning from tomorrow, teacher? Yeah, from, like, from tomorrow on. Is, is, it, is it okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and please remember to have breakfast before the class because I experienced lots, with, with lots of students. If they study this way, they, okay, they are going to use lots of energies. It is going to empty your stomach. You feel very hungry during the class and it's going to impact your creativity mindset. You, you, if, you're, if you're hungry, you cannot think of any ideas and you cannot follow the way. So try to have breakfast before the class. Heavy breakfast, not light breakfast. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to send you uh, the book file and please try to finish, okay? This one and this one and this one. These are very easy. At the, at the end of the book, you will go to find the answers. Okay, so right now, thank you so much for today and uh, see you tomorrow with T. See you tomorrow, Tuko. Yeah, bye-bye, yeah. Tuko. See ya. Can, can you please...
bring salt for me this my map because I can my map book can accept this app. Oh, I have another app for the MacBook. Uh, so um, uh, we are going to send you the app for the MacBook only, and you can open this brand map. Oh, thanks for the information. Okay, thank you, teacher. But yep. uh, for the best for the best situation, can you please screenshot it for me? Uh, the bad the bad presentation. What what is it? I mean the best situation situation. The best situation, the yeah. the, the 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 situation of, of what uh, going. The I D. I mean like uh best situation is mean that my mobile can accept your app. Oh, oh, oh! Your MacBook cannot read this uh this app. I have yeah. yeah. I, yeah I already did it. I already built an app. Okay. Um, a typical app for MacBook. So I'm going to send you another app so you can read. Okay. So your MacBook can read the brand maps. So no worries for this one. You need to download the app today. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I got yeah. it. Okay, thank you so much, Go. See you tomorrow, Go. See you, teacher. Okay, yeah, bye bye, Go. Bye bye, teacher. <laughs> yeah.